What if I told you that Elon Musk's groundbreaking brain-computer interface company, Neuralink, might already be obsolete and has already been surpassed by another company that is in the same business of shaping the future of how we interact with computers? In this video you'll see how and what they did to earn that title. Back in July of 2016, Neuralink was founded by visionary and billionaire, Elon Musk, with the purpose of merging humans with artificial intelligence by implanting chips into the heads of people and putting threads of wires directly into their brains. This very invasive procedure can only properly be done with a robot implanting those wires one by one as that is too difficult and dangerous to accomplish by human hands. According to Elon, this invasive approach is necessary to enable the bandwidth between your brain and a computer that is required for functions such as telepathy, curing depression or eventually even to play video games with only your brain. But recent studies and trials by the company, Battelle, which is a non-profit organization working under the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency of the United States have shown that it's not necessary to put wires into your brains to accomplish these functions and potentially even more than that. The Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, also called DARPA, started the DARPA N3 program a few years ago which aims to develop non-invasive clinical procedures to connect your brain with a computer and accomplish all the functions Neuralink aims to do invasively in a non-invasive manner. There are several different companies, universities and organizations currently developing technology under the N3 program to bring about a non-invasive brain-computer interface but Battelle seems to have the edge with their new revolutionary procedure. Battelle works on the Brainstorms project, where instead of using wires, they use magnetoelectric nanotransducers. Thousands of those can fit across the width of a human hair which make them perfect to send them across your bloodstream via a simple injection that then travel through your circulatory system and are then guided with a magnet to the targeted area of the brain. The most obvious advantage this procedure has is that it is much less dangerous and time-consuming than the hour-long surgery that is required to implant a Neuralink chip into your head even if it's done by the Neuralink robot that has to be careful not to puncture any of your vital veins of your brain while implanting the wires. Scalability would also be a huge pro as doctors all around the world would be able to inject those nanoparticles since there's no huge barrier of entry of needing to be a neurosurgeon and needing to have a giant costly robot in your operation room. There's not even an operation room required. That's how scalable this procedure by Battelle is. One might think that because the Brainstorms project is non-invasive, that the quality and feature set would at best be slightly worse than Neuralink's. But that couldn't be further from the truth. In fact due to the huge amount of particles that would reside in your brain after the injection, the amount of data from a vast size of your brain would be much higher than the data you would get from a Neuralink device which can in its standard configuration only cover a relatively small patch in your brain. Unlike Musk's Neuralink, the Brainstorm project also has the ability to go much further into the brain and capture or write data from those subcortical places which Neuralink could not possibly capture as piercing that far into the brain would be dangerous to do with wires. But those nanoparticles traveling through the bloodstream pose no threat to your brain and thus are perfect for it. While Elon Musk did promise that Neuralink would eventually cure things like depression or Alzheimer's, he has often been criticized for these statements as the Neuralink's wires would not be able to reach the areas of the brain that are connected to these diseases, unlike brainstorms. Hearing about things like nanoparticles or neural dust as it's often called, it's hard not to think about those science fiction type machines called nanobots which just like nanoparticles, you inject into your circulatory system. But unlike Battelle's nanoparticles, those nanobots would be able to freely and intelligently move around inside your body and perform medical procedures or maintenance on your body. Award-winning futurist Ray Kurzweil has predicted that by 2030, that, as part of this human machine melding, nanobots will inhabit our bodies. While flowing through our arteries, these microscopic robots would keep us healthy and transmit our brains onto the cloud. While it's uncertain whether or not this is actually going to happen by 2030, it's clear in what direction we're moving in terms of interfacing our brains and eventually even our whole bodies with machines. Currently the nanoparticles are not that much more than magnets which allow for read and write in conjunction with a helmet that the user has to wear. I think these first steps towards a brain-computer interface that's usable by the general population are very promising. A future in which we can live inside virtual worlds like the Matrix or Sword Art Online, fix blindness or deafness or help people suffering from autism, Alzheimer's or depression is looking less and less unfeasible with every passing day. 
Battelle said that the team will move forward to the second increment of the three-phase next-generation non-surgical neurotechnology program and mature capability sets for its magnetoelectric nanotransducer-based BCI concept. The group will further develop and test an external brain writing interface for the brain system to transmit or receive magnetoelectric signals technology, which requires the injection of localized ments in neural tissue to be guided by a magnet to a targeted location in the brain. If selected for Phase 3, Patel's team would execute a FDA administration-approved regulatory strategy for potential brainstorms human trials. Phase 3 is expected to be completed by 2024. Now the question is whether or not Elon Musk has any plans to switch the procedure at which Neuralink is going to interface with our brains as aside from potentially bringing the Neuralink to market earlier than whatever comes of Battelle's brainstorms project, there's not much else Neuralink's invasive approach has on the non-invasive, safe and wide-reaching functionality that Battelle's BCI has. It also wouldn't be smart to underestimate DARPA projects as it is run under the US military which gave us huge paradigm shifts such as the internet, GPS, touchscreens and more. But the techno-god and innovator Elon Musk is likely the last person of Earth that gets caught off guard when it comes to new technology that's hard to imagine right now but is likely still just around the corner. Maybe it's part of Neuralink's long-term plan. Only time will tell in the end. Battelle isn't even the only Neuralink competitor focusing on advancing BCI technologies. There's Paradromics which is focusing on a very similar way of interfacing with the brain as Neuralink but has a higher channel and wire thread count improving the read and write quality of the interface. Openwater and Kernel both chose to design completely non-invasive head-mounted brain-computer interfaces which measure the blood flow of parts of your brain to guess which neurons might be active and derive brain activity from that. Kernel is one of the first to actually release their brain-computer interface but it's clearly not meant for the average consumer as the price is at several tens of thousands of dollars. Both of these devices don't come close to the fidelity of the above-mentioned invasive or semi-invasive techniques just yet and it's unclear whether or not they ever will. But competition and development in the still-developing field of brain-computer interfaces from all sides is welcome and will only accelerate the coming of the future. Now what is your opinion of Neuralink or its competitors? Do you think Neuralink's approach of using battle-tested technology that might be obsoleted relatively soon is a smart one? Are Battelle and the other members of the DARPA N3 program going to shape our future of potentially the biggest invention of our human history, brain-computer interfaces or is it expected to fail? Maybe you know of some other Neuralink competitors. Please tell us about it in the comments and let us have some nice discussions about it. Um, the system, even in version 1, that we're uh, going to unveil today is capable of, of a thousand times more uh, electrodes than the, uh, the the best system out there, and they're all read and write. So this is this is really quite I think I mean for something to be a thousand times more than what is publicly approved is quite a big difference. Thank you for watching AI News. We consistently report on the newest technologies that are shaping the future of our world. We'd appreciate you subscribing and watching our other videos. See you around and take care.